QSP. It's been a while since we had QSP in here. And this is a button lock. And this, you know what? I'm gonna raise, I'm gonna raise the camera up a little bit. This is a reasonably decent sized knife called the Swordfish. Seems like they've been doing a lot of they got the lark out now, and then they got the hornbill. And so I thought we're we're talking about birds, right? But here we go with swordfish. So this is a swordfish. Check it out. Swordfish, 14C28N, G10, G10, what the hell? And here's the box, by the way. And uh, can we open it? Okay, so what do we got? What do we got? We got crazy stickers. Uh, well, penguins, definitely not, uh, not a, well, not a fish. So now it's a bird. Yeah, you're right. Hornbill, penguin, lark, all kinds. Okay, never mind. So here we go. And uh, I was going to say, and we got 3.625. It's a monster knife. Uh, what do we got overall length? I don't know, but we're going to, oh, 8.12. Okay. That's, you know. These days, that's that's getting into the XL size. And let's take a look at this puppy. Stonewashy blade, G10 handle, lanyard hole, wire clip, one big screw to lock her down, and flip it to the left. And you can do, I mean, you can do button locks. I got left-hand friends. They're doing button locks. They got no problem doing them. And there we go. Button. Left. Even me, and I'm not left-handed. Okay. Come on. Let her drop. Okay, I'm really bad left-handed. This is like that. Now, this one, uh, it's, it's. It's not just going to fly open on you. So maybe that's a good thing. See this? That's pretty good detent for a button lock, don't you think? That's, that's pretty solid. Um, but it's still flickable, right? It's still finger flickable, but it ain't super easy to do. You got to be somewhat intentional doing it. And then, of course, you got the flipper tab, which is easy breezy right or just press the button right flip it open close so real fidget friendly there let's take a look at this well blade to handle length i yes it touched okay yes it's yeah it's yeah they couldn't have done any more than that on it so what do we got some kind of a warny looking crazy all kinds of hybrid God only knows blade, which probably is good for that. Whew. Oh, hell yeah, it's good for that. And it's good for that. And you're no good for that. You're no good and you're done. But whew, like that, yikes. Yeah, see that tip? Man, okay, yes. That's kind of purpose-driven, isn't it? Now, this will make it great to, like, open boxes and do kind of really close in, little just ooh, picking labels off of boxes and doing things, you know, like a like an X-Acto knife type thing. You know, freelance yourself out, do tracheotomies, different things like that, you know, whatever, you know. Yeah, and you may not be a doctor, but you could play one on uh, YouTube, so there you go. And you have the right instrument. Just, you know, pour some whiskey on it to disinfect it first. And uh, then drink some of it yourself. And you got ambidextrous thumb studs. Okay. And it's a button lock. Yeah, baby. That's something. I'm sure it's like probably under two ounces, right? Of course. You know, I can always call them. Yep, it's not two ounces. I told you it wasn't two ounces. 4.36, that's actually not bad. 123 grams, okay. So how big an old boy are you? Let's see. 
3.6 something. But ooh, you are too, aren't you? Not three and three quarter though. Close to 95, let's say 94 millimeter blade length. And okay, eight and an eighth, 8.125, uh, 20.7 centimeters. So it's got to be really close to this. Yeah, it's real close to the PM2. I mean, just maybe the PM2 supposedly, technically on tape, is just a skosh longer. But not much, not much. And let me see what we got here for thickness. Boy, they're pretty close, aren't they? I mean, this might be actually a little bit thinner. No, it's about the exact same as the PM2. Okay, so that's an optical illusion. And 0.11. Okay. They all run in about 2.7, 2.8, which I guess really means three, three millimeter blade stock. You know. So, wow, okay. Slicey little number, isn't it? Wow. Ergos. Little palm swell in here. Other than that, just kind of that handle reminds me of something. What is it? Like about 20 other knives I've seen, I guess. I mean, this just start, start getting familiar because there's only so many ways you can do a handle, right? But this, yeah, it's it's gonna be comfortable. And it is. Uh depends on how big your hands are, but here. With this little canoe type thing going on here, it locks your fingers down pretty good. And then you got this, which I wouldn't call really a go forward position. I mean, if I was going to go forward on this knife, I'd do something like that. But you got to make sure you stay off of that button, okay? So kick it up here. Keep your finger off the button. Because when you push this button, it's above grade. Let's see how far. We can push this button, and you can see the plunger in here before it lets go. So is it flush? Yeah, once it's flush with the scale, it's gone. Okay, so um, yeah, 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 it's gone. Okay, so you you can't, uh, yeah, you got to. You're going to have to be, you won't be where you got, where you, where you got it flush with here and it still hasn't released. And then you actually have to push beyond that. This is set up to where it's going to be a fairly early release on that. Okay. That doesn't bother me. I can't remember the last time I ever had a button lock open in my pocket or anything like that. So. No, but I mean, that's, that's an individual thing for everybody to think about. That's comfortable in the hand though. It's interesting. What do you think? I mean, you like the design. I thought it was intriguing myself. Um, I saw that it was good sized and that's, you know, unusual these days. So I always kind of, that kind of draws me in to begin with, to take a little, closer look and then of course i bought that hornbill right and then um I, I thought wow that is way cool and uh i got the canary which is the fi little fixed blade thing in uh fiber uh carbon fiber a fat carbon fiber and it was copper infused and i guess i don't have them next time i do a qsp video i'm gonna bring in some other knives to show you but um they, you know take a look at what they've just come out with they've come out with kestrel as well and take a look at that the hornbill the kestrel of course this one as well the swordfish um yeah and then the canary and if they come out with that copper infused and i don't know i think it's coming but it may be midsummer 23 or later. But this sucker, 
I like it's grippy. It's a multicolor, you know, so you got that black thing, but it's not black, black, boring black, you know, it's got some color to it. And uh, it's really inexpensive. 69 LTK discount code, right? 10% off. Yes, they're in stock. Why don't you buy it now with one click? And then LTK, so you get about seven bucks off, right? So you're in the low 60s. 14C, G10, stonewash finish. There's your overall length, all your goodies. And I don't know, what's the... I got this. Oh, yeah. Okay. I got this. So you can get them in, you know, different. I mean, I like the red stuff. So, I mean, I was big with that. But uh, you can get red with the black. But you can just get black, blacked out, whatever you want to do it. So there are options there. QSP, you know, they, they're they always there. They're always there making some interesting knives. And, of course, the Penguin, wow, they have done that. Here and there, titanium, M390, the Penguin Plus, blah, blah, blah. People love that, right? And so they just keep trucking and doing some new unusual things. So I always like QSP. They're a player. They're a player. And this one, she's sharp. Um, you know what? This might not be a bad one to send in to get a Rockwell on. Or maybe I ought to do that with the Hornbill since that's S35VN. I'm not sure the Rockwell on a 14C is all that big a deal. You know what I mean? For the for the for all the cost and run around to do that. Maybe it'd be more fun to do the S35 on the Hornbill. So I'll think about that. But yeah, that would be interesting. But 14C, if it's done right, it can perform. He can perform really well. The plunge is nice. Um, you know, I'm not getting any play. It's centered up. Um, you know, it's not too heavy. It's definitely full size. This could do some slicing for you. I mean, here's your here's your contact patch. It's pretty close, even though it's a, you know, it's a flipper. You got the tab there. But still, not bad. So, take a nice long look at this. Yeah. It's got nested liners in it. They're skeletonized. Wire clip. Maybe you like it. Maybe you don't. Everybody's got an opinion about wire clips. Jimping along top of the blade. Nice ambidextrous thumb studs. You know, you can climb up on this. Not a problem. You got your little logo up here. So you got to get in from behind. And let's grab the wrenches. And see where we're going to go with this dog. And we got that. That wasn't a problem. What do we got here? Number six is, I think. They are tiny little screws. They look like, but they're number sixes. So not a problem there. And I don't know what is that one for the what is that one for the pocket clip? Oh, that's a number eight. You know what? I don't know that I need it. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, okay, here's that too. Nah, I didn't need to take the clip. I would have to if I wanted to separate the liner. You know, so if you're gonna disassemble it, separate the liner out because you think you got you know, debris or something between the liner and the scale, then you could do that. That's not a problem. This is this is basically pristine, so I'm not going to worry about it. And here's the, the spring. Spring is sprung. Ooh, look at the Mr. Fancy Boy bearings. And here's the stop. Okay. Holy cannolis. Okay. Oop, oop. Okay, there we go. Now let's drop all this away. There's the spring. There's the button. Okay. And, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yes. Looks like we got a little flatsy over here on this pivot. Capturing up. Where are we capturing up at? Not there. Must be on the front. We'll look at that in a bit after we get done oogling. These lovely bearings. 
Yeah, I'm need I need to kind of purge them a little bit. Unless you want to leave them alone, I mean, I, I can't. I, I'm not going to say that there's there's anything wrong with just keeping them the way they are. Okay, yeah, and there's your flat there. So the flat's got to go towards the front to come back through here, and then that's going to center your logo. And then we we got lots of we got lots of goop. So there's that. But you know what? That's nice. I'm impressed by the bearings. They're nice big wides. They support really well. And you have a tall blade, so it's nice to have that. I think that's a good quality little addition to this. And it's so inexpensive, it was not necessary, but they did it anyhow. Swordfish. Swordfish. Yes. Button lock. Button lock. Badass. Got that kind of warny look. And uh, there's a warning right there. Ooh, baby, that tip is sharp. This knife is sharp. 14C, nice and corrosion resistant. Definitely uh, finger flickable and fidget friendly. Definitely budget friendly. It ain't no like 89, 92 bucks out of the thing. Nah, hell no. It's in the low 60s after discount. That's a good deal. Interesting QSP. They keep coming up with all kinds of designs, and they've got some classic stuff rolling around. But check out that hornbill. I love that in that fat carbon fiber, S35VN. And then you might want to look at the Lark as well. That's an interesting front flipper, top flipper type knife. We do. We love them knives. So you guys, stay sharp.